Hey Fluffy, do you want to make 250,000 gold an hour in World of Warcraft today? Right, you need to kill this rare in Mulgore that drops this uncommon chess piece that everyone vendors. But really, it's actually worth billions and billions of gold. Well done, Fluffy. You're rich. It's mega rare as they're selling so fast for 10 million gold and not because it's a piece of crap transmog that few people bother putting on the auction house. So its value is easy to hyperinflate. <laughs> so you did it. You clicked on a YouTube video with a clickbait. 250k an hour farm in World of Warcraft. What you saw in the intro was probably what you usually get when you click on that sort of video, but I'm hoping this one will be a little bit different. Is it even possible? Well, yes, but we will get to that. First, let's go for a farm, and we'll come back later on and see how this relates to the 250k an hour. We are going to be farming for this BFA engineering mount. This is actually my favourite farm in the whole game as it made a huge contribution to my first 10 million gold that I made and it's a pretty lazy farm where you're just auto running for a lot of the time. To set this up is not particularly simple. You need to get your BFA engineering to 175 which isn't cheap or easy. I'm not going to go through the levelling process in this video simply because I don't want it to drag on for 15 minutes so instead I have linked the Wild Professions guide in the description below. You also need to craft your engineering goggles from BFA that look like these and wear them while doing this farm. I also find that wearing the Heart of Azeroth seems to help as well. You then need to kill the last boss in Motherload on Mythic difficulty to get the schematic to drop. The farm involves running the Motherload dungeon on normal difficulty and killing the last boss. Let's have a look at what we need to make them out while we watch the dungeon footage in the background. So, Platinum and Storm Silver Ore. This is easy, just farm or buy from the auction house, etc. The Burley Stable Azerite Reactor is a vendor bought item that costs 30,000 gold from a vendor in this building with the Arrow on at the moment. You get Expulsum from breaking down BFA items in the scrapper in either Boralus or Desire Law. You will get some from breaking down the drops you get from doing the farm, but you will need more. As a side note, if you do this farm during a dungeon's bonus event week, you'll get more loot from the last boss, therefore you'll have more stuff to scrap, so you'll need less additional expulsum. To get the rest of the expulsum, I suggest either scrapping Tide Spray Linen Bracers that you craft yourself from BFA tailoring. You need around 6 braces per an expulsum. Just make sure you use the Easy Scrap add-on to make your life so much easier. Personally, if it was me, and you don't need your second profession on your farming character, just get BFA Alchemy and Transmute Expulsum, just to make everything a little bit easier. When you get to this part of the dungeon, this boss, he will snap you back and cost you time if you just keep running. It is much better to do this farm on a character that can drop aggro, such as a Rogue Vanish or a Hunter Faint Death. You would just drop aggro here and remount and carry on, but I'm showing you the harder way. Wait here until you get both flame effects on you. Just count till two more seconds and then just carry on with the run again. The other four items we need all drop from the last boss and as you can see from the footage the general idea is just to run straight to last boss, 
kill him, run out, reset the instance, and repeat. We need to be careful how we kill this last boss too, as we don't want it to go into the second phase and cost us loads of time, and this will probably take you some practice. The boss cannot go into phase two while he's casting his Gatling gun mechanic, so our plan is to just do some steady DPS. As soon as he starts casting his second Gatling gun, you're gonna blow every cooldown you have to try and burst him down. Once he gets down to about 30%, he doesn't seem to go into phase three anymore, and it just makes the whole encounter so much faster. As you can see from the timer on the screen, it is about three minutes a run. This can definitely be done faster if you have a character that can drop aggro on the second boss and has a bit more gear than this warrior, which will easily be obtainable after 9.2 release and later. You are limited to 10 lockouts an hour, so I just log my character out at the dungeon entrance and come back in about 30 minutes once I finish my runs. Realistically, you are looking to get in the materials for about one and a half mounts per hour spent farming in this dungeon. Now that we have a solid farm, let's jump back to the clickbait 250k an hour title from the start. In the real world, if I want to drink water at home, it's basically free. If I want water from a local shop, it may cost me one pound. If I want water at a concert, then it can be five pounds. The same product, but where you buy that same product has a huge effect on the price, and that philosophy applies to World of Warcraft as well. The mount costs us to make 30k gold from a vendor bought item, a little bit of ore, and some expulsum. Basically, that's definitely no more than 35,000 gold. On the EU currently, the price range is from 60k to over a million gold, with similar price ranges on the US side. If I say we are selling these for 100k on our server, that's 65k profit per mount, and we can farm more than one mount an hour, so that looks really good. It's no 250k, but it's definitely a good solid farm. But we wanted 250,000 gold an hour. I can tell you for a fact these mounts can sell for 300,000 gold as I've sold two on the EU in the last week alone. I definitely think selling at 400k is possible and 500k wouldn't surprise me, especially on the US servers where prices tend to be higher. We learn where we sell can be as important as what we sell. As usual, I'm going to take the most extreme examples to make my point. Here we have our mount information from a few low population servers, like the ones I made my sales on last week, but these are on the US region. If you take notice of the last scene section, it's been months and months and months since one of these mounts has ever been listed on any of these auction houses across all these servers. How much gold per hour could we be making if we did our farm on these servers? We know we can craft more than one mount an hour. We know for a fact we can sell for at least 300k with a 35k crafting cost. When you look at these numbers, 250k an hour actually looks like a low estimate on what you could actually be making doing the farm on these servers. Same product, different location, different price. If you have seen my video on cross and multi-server gold making, which I will link below, you know that having gold on other realms can be almost as good as having it on your main server. So if you see really good gold making opportunities on another server, just go for it. Most of us play on high population realms where opportunities are really hard to come by. So to finish, I'm just going to say that this is a really good farm, even if it's not 250,000 gold an hour on your server, and it will always be a good farm. Mounts are always in demand, even the ones from really old expansions still sell really well today. There are opportunities out there to earn 250,000 gold an hour or even more, but you have to be flexible and go to the markets. This opportunity for earning that has gone now that I've made it public. My hope is that from watching this video, you will see that making gold on other servers can make you much more gold if you pick your market. It takes more effort, obviously, but the payoffs can be insane, as we have seen. Thank you for listening, and good luck out there.